In an earlier video, I discussed some of the drawbacks to the desalination of ocean water as a source of potable water. These included cost issues created by the need to provide the large amount of electric energy needed to operate either reverse osmosis or distillation-based desalination plants, and the need to purchase expensive tracts of land near the shoreline to site these plants, as well as environmental issues such as the need to dispose of the large amounts of very salty brine created in the, the desalination process. As a result, potable water produced by conventional desalination is very expensive compared to potable water obtained from other sources. Recently, a startup company has been working on the development of desalination systems that can operate offshore in deep parts of the ocean in the dark, cold, aphotic zone. This system takes advantage of hydrostatic pressure to force the ocean water through reverse osmosis membranes. This reduces the amount of electric energy needed to produce fresh water from salt water by as much as 40%. The system also produces little or no salt water brine, and any brine that is produced can be mixed back into the ocean in a manner that does less damage to aquatic life. In this video, I will describe how this deep ocean desalinization system would work. This image shows a schematic of a single deep ocean desalination pod that the Ocean Well Company is developing. The pod draws in seawater through a fine screen that keeps out large aquatic life, but not the phytoplankton that's abundant at these depths. The pod contains a reverse osmosis membrane and hydrostatic pressure forces about 10 to 15% of the incoming seawater through the membrane to produce fresh water that then is pumped to shore. Most of the seawater, together with the phytoplankton it contains, is discharged several tens of meters above the desalination pod. An array of these pods, according to the Ocean Well Company, would be deployed to produce fresh water that would be pumped to shore where it would be sent through a conventional water treatment plant to remove any contaminants. This image shows how several of these ocean well deep ocean desalination pods would be connected to form a so-called freshwater farm. According to Ocean Well, each desalination pod would be capable of producing a few million gallons of fresh water per day. Each pod would require about 1.5 megawatts of electric power to operate, mainly to pump the fresh water from the deep ocean to the water treatment plant on shore. Unlike conventional reverse osmosis desalination plants, which typically are designed to produce 50% fresh water and 50% salty brine, the ocean well reverse osmosis pods would produce only 10 to 15% fresh water. Thus, the brine ejected from the pods would be significantly less salty and should mix readily with seawater, producing very little damage to aquatic life. Recently, the Ocean Well Company entered into an agreement with the landlocked Las Virginis Municipal Water District in Los Angeles County, which would allow the company to test its desalination pods in the water district's reservoir. If the test turns out to be successful, the district likely will contract with the Ocean Well Company to provide about 10 million gallons of desalinated seawater per day to the district. If the test with the Las Virginis Municipal Water District turns out to be successful, the Ocean Well Company believes that it could have its system operating in the deep ocean within about five years. 
However, there are several challenges that would have to be overcome. The pods need to be located about 1400 feet or 460 meters below the surface in order to be in the aphotic zone. To get to water this deep, they would need to be located somewhere between three and seven miles off the Malibu shore in Southern California. So the fresh water produced by the pods would need to be pumped to the surface and moved roughly 10 miles from the water farm to the city of Calabasas in order to feed into the district's water supply system. The desalination pods themselves are quite large, approximately 40 feet in diameter, so it's not clear how much structural engineering will be needed to stabilize them on the ocean floor so that they are not moved around by the fairly strong ocean currents that are commonly found off the Southern California coast. In addition, the reverse osmosis membranes have a finite lifetime, so provisions for maintenance will need to be included in the cost estimates. And finally, there are several state and fed federal regulations that will need to be met both to site and to operate the water farm and to build and operate the pipeline that will deliver 10 million gallons of fresh water daily to the Las Virginis Water District. Clearly, additional costs will be incurred in this process. So it remains to be seen if, the, if deep ocean desalination pods will perform as advertised, both in terms of environmental protection and cost. However, if the system does work, it likely would provide additional fresh water at a more reasonable cost to the consumers than conventionally desalinated water. In addition, it likely would cause much less damage to the environment than conventional desalination plants. I hope you have found this short video interesting and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments section of the video and I will do my best to respond. Also, please take some time to view some of my other videos. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching.